So you're applying domain driven design and you wanted to find aggregates. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. I'm going to go over ways about thinking about defining aggregates using an example domain. And you might be surprised by the outcome. Thanks to Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So this video is really a continuation or part two of another video that I've done. I'll have a link in the description that illustrated this domain modeling kind of exercise. But the unfortunate part, which I really thought was backward, is it was kind of really relating everything to entities and focusing on data. So as a quick summary, this example domain we were using was a dinner hosting platform. And the entities and kind of data originally defined was a user, a guest, the menu, a dinner, a host, reservation, bill, menu review, and guest rating. So originally, in something like a dinner, this is what it was kind of using as the example of what an aggregate would be. So we had something like a dinner, which was our aggregate root, that entity. And then it had a value object that was representing the host, the identifier of the host, the identifier of the menu, and then it had a collection, a list of reservations. Defining an aggregate isn't just about having a cluster of related objects or entities and value objects and the relationships between them. It's more so about what are the invariants, the business rules that you need to apply. When you need to apply those, then what data from what entities are applicable and given that cluster of related objects. It's also that cluster is a consistency boundary so that when you do make a state change, you can understand from the root what's happened and everything can be consistent in the state that you need it when you make that state change. So if we're gonna find an aggregate, we need to define what the business rules are. Well, how do we know what the business rules are? Well, we need to find what the behaviors are first. That will define what the business rules are. We can explore that. Then we can see what the data behind those behaviors are. What happened? What's happening in our domain? That's what we care about. If we think about a dinner, well, a dinner's planned. Maybe we have a, cert is, a seat is reserved. Maybe there's a reservation that's canceled after a seat's reserved. Our reservation is confirmed when somebody actually attends. And then the dinner is actually hosted. These are actually things that are happening within that domain, within actually hosting a dinner. Now, to be clear, I'm just making all this up. I'm defining what the behaviors are for illustration purposes. But if we keep going with this, it's how do these things occur? How did this happen? Well, generally, there's some life cycle to something, right? And that's kind of sometimes a giveaway about you may have some type of workflow. There's some timeline here where a dinner was planned, a seat was reserved, or maybe it was canceled, it was confirmed, it was hosted. That was kind of the life cycle of a dinner. There's generally a start and an end. There may be a lot of things that happened over a long period of time, over a short period of time, but there's generally some start and end. So how do these things happen? How do these events occur? Well, we have actions, behaviors that we're exposing. You can plan a dinner, you can reserve a seat, you can cancel a reservation, you can attend the dinner, you start the dinner, that's what the host does. There's all these different behaviors that you're exposing. So if I look back at what that original aggregate was defined as for a dinner, what would happen here? What's the thing that kicks anything off? Well, it's really just planning a dinner. And that's kind of a good indicator of something creation, something happening, the very beginning of something. We can also think about the reservation and that has some importance because again, I'm making up the examples here is that if we're planning a dinner, well, there's probably only so many seats. So we do have some type of business rule there where reservations are going to be dictated by the number of seats for a dinner. So as a small example in code, now that we have our behaviors defined, that's what we can actually implement. And when we start implementing that, then we start realizing the data that we need behind that. So we can plan a dinner. We have a dinner ID, the number of available seats. When is the dinner scheduled? We can then reserve a seat. We specify the guest that's making that reservation. We can cancel a reservation just based off the guest that uh, has previously made a reservation. Same thing, we can confirm a res uh, reservation and our host could start the dinner. When we've done all this, we realize, okay, well, a reservation is has some identifier has a guest associated to it. Our guest then has a guest ID and a name. It's very simple and straightforward here, but the behaviors are really what's driving everything, not the data. 
So that's great and all, but do we really need an aggregate for this? Again, it's a consistency boundary in enforcing our business rules. What really business rules did we have? The only thing really that we had was when you reserve a seat, making sure that there was actually availability. So sure, that makes sense, that's doable there. Where's our consistency? Still just around this, but do we really need an aggregate for this? No, not really, but I'm making up the example, I'm making up what the behaviors are, I don't really mind it, we're really exposing, explicitly stating what's happening, what the things that you can do with this aggregate, so I don't really mind it. But do you really need an aggregate in this case? No, you could get away with a transaction script. A transaction script is really is just creating a transaction, performing all your operations, kind of procedurally, and you could be doing everything we're still doing. Doing that validation for availability when a reservation is coming in, dealing with concurrency for that consistency, you could really just be interacting with your database directly. You wouldn't really need an aggregate in this case. It kind of can go sideways when you add more and more logic where you do have more things going on within your aggregate. But you still, in this simple example, could get away with a transaction script. So here's an example of where it, in my opinion, makes no sense. So back to the original here, we had the idea, an entity of a menu. And the menu was originally defined like this when we were only thinking about entities, data, and relationship. Is that the menu had a root, that was the root. It had a value object to the host identifier, to the dinner ID, a collection of those. The menu had some items and there were some menu reviews. So we go back to, well, what happened? What are, what are the things that are happening within the domain related to a menu? Well, a menu was created. Maybe the menu got updated. A menu item, we added a menu item uh, that got updated. Maybe a menu was reviewed. So then maybe the behaviors that are deriving these events, these things that are happening, are things like create menu, update menu, add menu item, update menu item, review menu. You can kind of see the gist here is that this is really CRUD centric. There isn't really any workflow going on beyond maybe review menu. That one might have some significance to it. So if I look at all these entities that originally defined, I don't really know what the behaviors are other than what I was defining, and I was defining them on a dinner because that was kind of the core of what we were doing. We were hosting a dinner. We had reservations to a dinner. Everything else was kind of more on the outside, was really there for supporting purposes, and there were relationships related to, okay, a dinner having uh, reservations for guests and a host hosting a dinner. But really the core of what we were doing is likely in a dinner and having those reservations. That's where I was exploring, okay, let's create behaviors, let's define what maybe we have some business rules, and let's capture that potentially in an aggregate. If you just have CRUD, like I did in the menu, you can just get away with a transaction script. Now there's three things I wanna focus on. The first being behaviors determine the data that you're encapsulating. When you realize what the behaviors that you're exposing, then the data behind that then you can start to realize what the formation of what an aggregate might look like and if you even need one. Define what those behaviors are. The second is one model doesn't need to rule them all, meaning that you may have the concept of something that doesn't need to exist as a single entity, as a singular idea. For example, maybe the guest or the dinner. You may have different parts of your system that the representation of that may be different depending on what those behaviors are. I call this splitting entities, where you may have the idea of a single entity, but it's not really a singular entity. It maybe have, you really could have two of them depending on the context of, well, this particular dinner has these particular behaviors that are related and a dinner can also exist somewhere else in another uh, boundary and it has completely different behaviors. You don't need one model to rule them all. And lastly, you will notice this, is that if you're using aggregates as that way to enforce invariance as a consistency boundary, we're talking about making state changes, not performing queries. So there's a difference here between what an aggregate might look like when you're really focusing on what it's for, for writes, for state changes, versus what you need for it for queries and reads. And I wanna drive that last part home on reads versus writes because it has a large impact on how you think about your design, your aggregates and the data involved. Because if you're only thinking about your aggregates as a way as a consistency boundary for enforcing business rules, 
when you're performing a write, then there's a lot of data that you don't necessarily need because it's only used for queries. I'm gonna have a video on this exact example to illustrate that coming up. If you enjoy topics like this and you wanna chat with other software developers about software architecture and design, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.